Hey guys, welcome to video lesson 5.5. .5. Um, today we're going to learn how to translate a shape across the coordinate plane. Um, another name for translate is translations. Uh, the expectations for today, please be sure you take notes. Uh, if you have any questions as we go through something, write down the time of uh, the video and where we are um, on your handout and we'll answer those questions tomorrow in class. And finally, um, if you have your handout, make sure you take notes on that. Um, if you have a calculator at hand, but I don't really think you'll need it. And um, there are some of you who have asked if you can just take notes in your notebook. Uh, you can do that. Just make sure you keep the handout that I gave you. Today there's eight slides, but page number eight has graph paper, so technically there's only seven. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, one of the first words you need to define is transformation. It's a, um, it changes the figure into another figure. So when we transform something, we're simply changing it into something else. And the new figure, when we take the old one and do some sort of transformation to it, it's called the image. So you're going to hear the word image being used a lot today. Um, and just understand when we say image, we're talking about the new shape. That's the shape something has been done to it already. Or that's the shape that's moved. So the first transformation we're going to talk about is translations. Um, and I'm sure some of you have done reflections, where it's like looking in the mirror, rotations, you know, spinning an object like a tire. Uh, those are all transformations. The one we're going to talk about today is translations. All right, a translation is a type of transformation in which the figure slides, but the shape never turns. So that means every point in the figure moves in exactly the same distance and in the same direction. So one example, if we take a look at this bike, we can slide it across. The entire bike moves to the right. In this example, to the right, we have a bike and we slid it to the bottom right. Again, the whole entire shape moved. It never turned. It never flipped. Okay, so the red is called the original figure and the blue in this case is called the image. They're exactly the same shape and the same size. Okay, page three of seven. I know there's a lot going on here. Uh, what we want to do is translate the red triangle three units right and four units down. So with your highlighter, if you can, or a pencil or a pen, underline this set of instructions that I've just highlighted for you. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the original red shape that I'm kind of coloring in purple. Okay, so this is the original shape. So the instructions tell us to go three right and three down. So every point, do you see these green arrows? Every point goes three right. Oops. One, two, three right and three down. One, two, three. Okay. Then we're going to take point C and we're going to count three to the right. One, two, three. And from there, we're going to go three down. One, two, three. Okay, and that's new C. Now we're going to take a look at A, and we're going to go three right. One, two, three. And three down. One, two, three. All right, so I'm going to erase this whole board so you can actually see what's going on. The new image is in blue. Okay, so this image here, new A, new B, new C. Okay, if you notice, next to A, B, and C, there are little tick marks. Do you see that? There's a little tick mark here next to B. There's a little tick mark next to the new C, and there's a little tick mark here next to the new A. Those are called prime. So A with the little tick mark, if you move your eyes to the left of the screen, it's read as A prime. Okay, this is a symbol we use when we're naming an image. So A, when we move it, becomes A prime. 
B, when we move it, becomes B prime. So instead of saying new image, old image, you could actually tell if you just see A, B, and C, that's the original image. And if you see A prime, B prime, C prime, that's the new image. Okay? So um, we're going to connect points A, B, and C as we did just a few minutes ago. And um, what we're going to do down here is just simply name where the new points are. So we're going to name A 1, negative 2. We're going to name B, which is 5. And then we went up 1, 2. Then we're going to name C. We went over 4 from the X and down 1, so negative 1. So here's our A prime, B prime, and C prime. All right, page four of seven. You're going to tell whether the blue figure is a translation of the red figure. So whether the blue is a translation of the red. So here's my red, and I moved it to the position where the blue is. Would that be considered a translation? Well, since the figure was slid, or I slid it down, um, the red figure slides to form the blue. So since we did a slide, the blue figure is a translation of the red. So the answer would be yes. All right, at any point, you need to pause the video to write notes down. Please be sure to do so. If you need to go back and rewind, go right ahead and do that. All right, we have the original three. Oh, sorry. We have the original three in red. and we turned it to the sideways three. Remember, um, a translation is simply a slide, no turning, no flipping. So the figure, the red figure turned to form the blue. So the blue figure is not a translation of the red or the other way around as well. Okay, so the answer in this case is no. This example does not show a translation. Okay. Um, again, on your own, you're going to tell me if the blue figure is a translation of the red, which means you're going to take a look at the red and tell me if the blue is its translation. You have four examples here, one, two, three, and four. Please pause it here. Just write yes or no and tell me why um, and bring this to class tomorrow. All right, page six of seven. Uh, for this example here, there's a lot going on on the page and I see that. So I try to shrink things down as much as I can. The vertices of square A, we have 1, negative 2. So you're going to go from 0, right 1, down 2. Then we're going to take a look at B, which is 3, negative 2. So from 0, go right 3, go down 2. To get C, 3, negative 4, 0, 0, go right 3, go down 4. And finally, 1, negative 4, from 0, 0, go right 1, go down four units. So this should be in your handout. What we're going to do is translate our shape uh, four units left and six up. So we're going to move the shape left and up. Left four, up six. So I'd like all of you to take a look at the chart that's drawn here. And believe it or not, this will be very, very helpful in organizing your points. Some, some students like going right to the grid and counting. One, two, three, four to the left, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, two, uh, six units up. You can do that, but at one point or another, you're still going to have to name the points. So I find it sometimes easier to do that in the beginning. If not, just go right ahead and graph it on the paper. So I'm going to take every X point and subtract 4, and I'm going to take all my Y values and add 6 to that. So if I take a look at 1, I'm going to subtract 4, then I take a look at my Y value, negative 2, and I'm going to add 6. So what does that look like? Well, if I'm at 1 and I subtract 4, that brings me to negative 3. If I'm at negative 2 and I add 6, that brings me to 4. This would be a good spot to use your calculator if you wanted to use one. So again, I'm going to take the values of B. I'm going to take 3 for my X, subtract 4. And then for my Y, I'm going to take negative 2, because that's my Y. Remember, the coordinates are X, Y. And I'm going to add 6. 
So what does that look like? Negative 3 minus 1, if you punch that in your calculator, you get negative 1. And if you take a look at negative 2 and add 6, you get 4. So these are going to be your new um, points for A, B, and C. For C, I have 3, 4, so I get, here's my work, and the new coordinates is negative 1, 2. And for D, here's my work for X and Y. Notice the X and Ys are separated by a comma, and my new coordinate is negative 3, 2 for D prime. So when you graph all this, and I'll show you exactly how to do it, I'm going to take A. If I just strictly graphed, and I went left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my A prime. If I name that point, I get this right here, negative 3, 4. So from 0, 0, I go left 3, up 4. So if you didn't like what I did in the chart, just move the shape and then name second. Okay? So please make sure you copy everything down that you saw on this slide. You will have to pause it. Um, and then hit play when you're ready. And finally, I'd like for you to do this one on your own and bring it to class for a discussion. Um, your next page on your uh, chart for your handouts is the coordinate plane that you can use. You're going to do exactly what we just did in the page before. You're going to give me this triangle, um, A, B, and C, and you're going to name the translation one unit to the left and two units up. So you're going to take every point and go left one unit and go up one. Then make sure you name each of the three points. Have this ready for class. All right, great work, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.